Happy Friday the 13th. The video that you're watching is going to be a vlog of my journey through the Friday the 13th franchise. I'll be watching every one of the movies. I'll be reading a tie-in novel. I will be reading a couple of comics. I hope you join me in this journey. I have some friends joining me. Yes, I do. I have friends. And they're going to be uh, dropping some videos my way and I'll be putting them in this as well. So, without further ado, let the journey start. First up, I'm just gonna, you know, we gotta start where it all began. The original Friday the 13th from 1980. The um, horror buddies never had the opportunity to do the original Friday the 13th. This is the first time I'm watching it with you guys. Friday the 13th, aka part one. Film that doesn't get the uh, respect that it deserves. I think one thing everybody forgets, you know, you say Friday the 13th, they think of a hockey mask, they think of Jason. Jason's not in this film. He's, he's in one flashback. This is in a very effective murder mystery slash, pun intended, slasher. There at the end of the first film, when we have the confrontation between Mrs. Voorhees and the final girl, you realize how cuckoo or uh, guano crazy Mrs. Voorhees is. It's, an, it's, a, it's a really great, great performance. I really enjoy this film so much. Uh, it's underappreciated. One thing is you can always tell uh, that something bad is going to start happening, usually when it's raining. It was kind of a one-off, but it led to everything else. And again, I don't think it gets the, uh, the praise and the appreciation that it should. I do love the Friday series, and it was maybe some of the first of like a slasher series that I got into as a kid. Probably shouldn't have been watching those when I was, you know, elementary school. And it was that and Halloween and, of course, uh, the, the nightmare stuff is what I remember my mom buying for me when I got my first VCR. She bought me the original uh, Friday VHS and then uh, the first uh, Halloween, I think. I actually think I had a I had a blockbuster version of Halloween. It had like little blockbuster like classics or something that it said. And you know, then of course me and my friends we would we would just rent those movies just over and over and over. If if we go to blockbuster and had nothing else to rent, I, I never really branched out much. It wasn't until I branched out into other slashers and some of the '80s movies like you know, Happy Birthday to Me or Chopping Mall and stuff like that until way later in my. 20s watching them with Eric but as a kid it was always you know rent a bunch of the Fridays and then we would rent the nightmares and feel like rent the Halloweens and now we probably just repeated the the circuit after we would complete the series for whatever reason I loved them and it's not because they're like particularly great and it's not because they're good at continuity of you know telling a, a, a coherent story because <laughs> they, they usually don't but I just love them they're like a good comfort food movies uh, the first film I feel like is you know a classic and but there are some cool kills and you know just uh, obviously the cool part about like mrs Voorhees being the killer that they talk about and scream and everything like that and it's always like a trivia question around halloween is who was the killer in friday the 13th the the kevin bacon kill is really cool doesn't really make sense how would you get a a spear like under the bed and then up anyway you know who, who cares it's a cool kill and I've, there's another kill after that where someone gets like an axe to the face that you don't really see a lot, but I feel like you see like the body later or something, and that one's pretty cool. And then of course the end, the Betsy Palmer kill is fantastic. The the decap is great, and then the the Jason scare, dream scare thing is a, a classic. I remember that one scared me a lot when I was a kid. So definitely would recommend that that first one. All right, so obviously I've got to get those subtitles on and oh yeah we, we definitely have to go with the uncut version one thing people talk about when they talk about this 4k is, is it, how extremely dark it is and you know what for once the internet's bitching is correct this is really dark oh that was pretty cool you know just this Oh, you you just got to love the cutoff jeans. I remember, remember Dad had some uh, jeans that he cut off. <laughs> if I was a flavor of ice cream, I would have to be orange sherbet. So the guy that plays Bill is Harry Crosby, which is interesting because that's Bing Crosby's son. I don't know much about Bing Crosby, obviously. I don't really listen to easy listening, but I do know Bing Crosby has like like a, a track with uh, David Bowie, Peace on Earth, Little Jubber Boy. And I'm pretty sure he did like White Christmas. I mean, uh, you know, I've heard some Bing. But, you know, it, it's interesting that his son was in this. I, I never knew that. That's very interesting. 
One down. 11 to go. It already starts off on a weird note because the film really has nothing to do with Friday the 13th as a as a thing. Like It's not like anybody's like afraid of that number. It's not like anybody's afraid of that day. They never mention, I can't pronounce the name of the phobia that you have of Friday the 13th. It doesn't go into any of the folklore behind like why there would be a, a superstition of Friday the 13th. It's just kind of like a random ass title. At least Halloween takes place on Halloween or Nightmare on Elm Street uh, takes place on Elm Street, Friday the 13th. I don't revisit this one enough. And to be honest, it's due to the lack of Jason. And, and that's a real shame. I do enjoy it a lot. The picture quality on the 4K is better during like the daytime scenes. But in the nighttime shot, it just tends to be just too dark. All right, I'm about to jump into Friday the 13th part. Two. So this one's from uh, 1981, the year of Insane's birth. Does she like this one? Hmm. Not only was it believes the year I was born, there's another reason I hold it close to my heart. The movie crypt did this as their first commentary. I have listened to this commentary more than a hundred times and i'm glad they put it on the blu-ray it's the end of june it's hot as hell and i'm ready to watch this so let me fire it up besides the the few dvds that i've had in the past currently we've got the uh the blu-ray box set from screen factory and I also got it on this Paramount Steelbook. I'm actually going to watch the Scream Factory one because I know there is a 4K scan on it. And I don't know if this Paramount is that same scan or not. Because it honestly, it didn't say on there if it was. It could possibly be. Nevertheless, I'm going to go with the Scream Factory. Unfortunately, at this point, no one has a 4K. But Arrow just announced that they have a 4K for this the remake that would have that's going to be dropping here by the time you guys see this video here in a few weeks i've said this once and i will say it again i miss the 80s recaps they just you know you're not gonna you know maybe maybe you are marathoning it and you're going oh you know i don't i just watch this i don't, I don't know if you're if you're oh and you, you know what you can do but i absolutely love the recaps that they had on these movies that's a little strange and i've watched this blu-ray before and it's never done that before but as soon as it went from chapter one to chapter two the play button popped up on there like from the menu i don't know that was a glitch has that ever happened to anybody on the scream factory blu-ray let me know ah so there's the very beautiful amy still playing jenny i think amy made a very good final girl that's for damn sure we got to talk about the uh the cut off mickey mouse shirt i mean it's iconic right <laughs> so we got a little little honky tonk bar here in uh, new jersey that they're at a set five years after the first movie so five years since uh, the hack off Pamela Voorhees' head. Five years since allegedly Jason jumped out of the water. But in five years, he grew a lot though, right? <laughs> and there is a Kiss pinball machine. Just absolutely love that. I love that background shit that you see, you know? You're, you're in the honky-tonk bar and then you got the uh, the Kiss uh, pinball machine. It's so nostalgic and, and awesome. Hey, Paul! Do you guys just kind of, as you're watching movies, especially after you've seen the movie so many times, kind of like the Hangout movie, you know? But you you start just looking everywhere and just noticing, you know, things in the background. Ted is one of the very few examples of alcoholics that actually live. Because because he didn't want to leave the bar, he actually survives this movie. Oh, I just gotta say, if you're at home and you got one, pour it out for poor crazy Ralph. They're all doomed. <sighs> if I had one, I'd pour it out, but I don't. All right, let's talk about the coloration of that urine. Yeah, she must have some sort of infection going on there. She needs to lay off the sodas or something. That was really dark. And why the fuck was Jason standing on a fucking chair? Dude, are you serious though? Fucking leather facing, got nothing on Chainsaw Jenny. It's May 1988 and 11 year old Doug 
is lying on the, a sofa. And whenever I say sofa, I'm talking, think your vintage 80s sofa. You know, the tan, tan and brown. You know the one I'm talking about. I'm lying on that, taking naps, dreaming. Everything was okay. Hi, Future Doug here. Uh, I failed to mention that this sofa was beside a window. Fast forward a month. 12 year old Doug gets his uh, VHS tapes from Alice, our next door neighbor that uh, managed a uh, video store. All that summer, she would uh, bring me a, a new um, Friday the 13th video. She, uh, she brought me a part two and I uh, watched it. And let me just tell you, I, um, I wouldn't sleep by windows after that. That messed with me, that scene traumatized me as a kid I mean 10 15 20 years later I uh, still didn't want to sleep by a window just no second film which I know Tom Savini I guess famously talked about how it was so ridiculous that they made sequels to the film because there was no Jason Jason was dead so okay if you just put that to the side I, I, I like the second one too I like Jenny as a character I like the kill in the wheelchair <laughs> How how depraved you have to be to kill somebody in a wheelchair. I think it's like that movie and I think it's one of the Fulci films. I just don't remember which one, if it's the City of the Living Dead or I can't remember which one it is, but I'm pretty sure there's a, there's like one of his films opens with like an old lady who gets like somehow hung up in a noose and she falls out of her wheelchair and strangles. It's, it's just awful. And there's the wheelchair kill, you know, sticks out in this one. Like the machete in the face and then coming back down the stairs is so awesome. The uh, And it's funny because, you know, you always talk about how he can, Jason can basically like teleport at certain points and how he never really runs. Well, he runs all over the second film. And and it, it, it's awesome. I love it. It does has the, the uh, uh, was it, window crash scare is pretty cool, which I think they, you know, kind of like repeat a lot of scares and they start to repeat like lots of stuff in these movies because they just had no creativity. And I love everything about the shed, like Jason's uh, off the grid, Shed life is awesome. The whole shrine to the uh, Mrs. Voorhees head, I think is cool. <laughs> the way Ginny uses the, what do they say in the movie? Like, use your child psychology that you're majoring in. That she, you know, dresses like her and is able to fight back. And it's kind of a cool way to, to come back at, at the at the killer. I might actually like part two more than I like part one. Highly recommended. So if you're new here, you're wondering, what is his favorite Friday the 13th? Well, that's what I'm doing this for. I'm watching this. I'm watching all of the... Movies again. What is my favorite Friday 13th in 2024? If you have watched multiple Friday the 13th videos that we have done, then you probably are thinking, yeah, he just watched his favorite movie. Yes, because I, uh, I've definitely talked this one up big time. I absolutely love Friday the 13th Part 2. There's another discussion going on in my head about that. What is up with me and all the sequels? Like, twos. Did you get Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, Friday 13th Part 2, Child's Play Part 2, Terrifier Part 2. I mean, I love Part 2s, but that's that's a, another video for another day. In December, you'll be seeing what my favorite Friday 13th movie is when I do my ranking video. I love Sackhead Jason. I just absolutely adore Sackhead Jason. This is what I call Hillbilly Jason. He's not particularly good at his job. That being said, there's some great kills. There's some great scenes in it. It's setting the groundwork that the rest of them will come. Kind of like uh, James Bond must go meet him. Jason has to chase somebody. He has this, um, it is the town that dreaded the sundown burlap mask. But we're starting to really get into what becomes Friday the 13th. We're starting to see Jason. Uh, it, all the quote rules are not nailed down yet, but we're getting there. It's interesting. And was it pretty much probably just a straight cash grab? Yeah. Lots of them were. Uh, it's still fun to enjoy. I watch it. It's I just don't watch it that much because we're getting ready to hit my favorites. I, I know Butch said he's not a huge fan of uh, Potato Sack Jason. I think Potato Sack Jason is awesome. I love it. I don't know why he didn't cut another eye into his potato sack. Like, why not have both eyes? Okay. But I, I think it looks cool. Uh, I like it. What, what's your favorite Friday 13th? Tell me in the comments now or wait and tell me in the comments in December with my ranking video.
that's up to you. Part three, and if you buy the right DVD in 3D, now we're getting into Jason. Jason's getting there, Jason. We have the hockey mask. We're getting to some of my favorite silly things about the films. We're getting to the kill, kill mama. Jason and walking, the villains running. For once, there's actually some interesting victims. It's not just silly summer camp kids trying to have sex all the time. Some of the 3D effects are silly, like with the popcorn popping, but still, I try to appreciate what it is. And, and for me, we are now in prime Jason territory. Um, it's it's not top tier for me, but it's just below. It's, it's, it's above average, and I really enjoy it. Part three, I like. Uh, I like all the bad 3D effects. You know, we're holding an eyeball like right up to the camera or the one dude who gets his head crushed and like his eyes pop out. That might be my favorite kill in that one. Of course, it's where he gets the iconic hockey mask. It's definitely not my favorite look for him in that film. And the mask is just too clean. I like the kill with, was it like a spear gun or something? He like shoots somebody with a spear gun. That one's pretty solid. And uh, I think there might be another, I can't remember if that's the one or if it's another one where there's someone doing like a handstand walking around and he, he splits them. And I feel like there might be like weird cuts in that because you know these movies were notoriously cut a lot. Hell, the MPAA did more cutting than Jason did in these films. So sometimes I can't remember the scenes and it feels like they're also, I know that there's other versions of the films that have gore effects maybe put back in or gore effects as special features. And I'd really like to watch those. I've never seen any of those. Three is solid. It's got, uh, what is it? Gratuitous biker gang, gratuitous biker chains and all that kind of stuff. I think they're going to like siphon someone's gas at one point. Uh, so you got like, you know, just uh, gratuitous dirt bags getting killed. Solid movie. Um, I think they repeat the same scare at the end of three that they do at the end of one with jumping out of the boat or something like that. Not not good to just keep repeating the exact same scare over and over, but still a good film. So now it's time for Friday the 13th Part 3 in 3D. Only thing is, is what version of it am I going to watch? Remember how excited I was when I got the Scream Factory box set? Oh, yeah. Oh, Mm. Oh, yeah, those were the days, right? However, I do not have a 3D Blu-ray player or a 3D TV, and those bastards didn't put the other version of 3D on this disc. Thanks, Scream. So, I'm gonna have to go back. I'm gonna have to watch the... Well, though I watch the DVD version I have. They have 3D glasses. Oh, I've got an idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and watch the one from the Metal 10 box set that came out in 2013. But, you know, I don't really want to open those awesome 3D glasses. So, I think I'm just gonna use the 3D glasses from this one. Not as cool. But you know, I'd look a lot better in those. But man, I just don't wanna open them. Oh, man, those look so cool, though. Okay, let's see. I really wish uh, me and Trent would have did 3D version. When we did this on Horror Buddies, that would have been that would have been cool. Silly us, we thought the uh, the Scream Factory version would look really good. Uh, okay. Yes, let's go. So the first few minutes of this will not be in 3D because we're getting a recap. We're getting a recap. We're getting a recap. I love recaps. Some people, they don't. I'm not some people. This is where where Jason gets his mask. That's uh that's the big thing on this one, right? It's 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 pretty much more of the same. You know, you get what you get. You're getting uh, Friday the 13th. It's a loco scene where he took the pitchfork to the stomach and you have the uh, the handle part. So far, that's been the best 3D scene in the movie so far. It just looked really good. So our Cheech and Chong characters, the way they looked into the barn right there, that reminded me of some Scooby-Doo shit, man. That was really cool. Boobies in 3D. You know, one thing about 3 
is Jason, once he gets the mask on, he gets a lot of screen time. I really like that. I like that Jason gets a lot of screen time. Because it seems like, you know, so many horror movies, you know, the big bad, you know, isn't on screen all that much. But I feel like he gets a lot of screen time in this one. It's like, no one asked for Disco Jason theme. But damn it, we're not mad about it either. All right, so just to, just to kind of clarify something, when watching it back with Trent a couple years ago, uh, I stated my um, my favorite kill was with the crochet needle. And, and you know what? It really wasn't that great in, in, in 3D, like I thought. But I tell you what, I think Trent was right on point, though, with uh, the favorite kill. I'm going to have to go with Vera and the eye shot, man. You like the eye. Yeah. You like the shot. Brutal. Shot dude. through the eye. And, and you're, you're to blame. blame. Yeah. And Jason's to blame. Oh, why you can't see see a goddamn thing that's my favorite kill this time man just uh really really was was awesome and the kind of setup for it was like oh really and even the 3d was kind of lame but you know the aftermath where the arrow was in the eye yeah trent was right if you're in camp crystal lake don't get in that damn canoe a bad idea Okay, so next up, we're going to have the final chapter. I'm looking forward to that one. The final chapter is awesome all the way through. And I feel like I've seen different versions of it where there's the Crispin Glover kill, I feel like is pretty cool. I think that's the one where he gets the wine opener through the hand and then he gets cleaver to the face or something like that. And then I can't remember if it's his body that somebody later has to run through that there's like a body that gets put up in the doorway with the hands up, like nailed to the doorway or something. And I feel like I've seen a part where somebody has to like run through it and then the Voorhees comes through and he just pushes the body down and it kind of rips the, the flesh on the hands. But then I feel like I've seen another version where the body's not there and they just run through the door. Now I could just be totally making that up, but I feel like I obviously prefer the one with the body in there and Jason has to pull down his own decoration. And if they didn't do that, they should have done that. And then of course, the way that uh, Corey Feldman kills Jason in that one is awesome with the sliding down the, the blade and the gore in the face. Of course, anytime Tom Savini does the gore, it's fantastic. They finally got to kill Jason. Now we are in Premium Jason, a local horror group that I am in. They had a Friday the 13th night, and I was asked, I, I was jokingly called the uh, known Jasonologist which I still uh, amuses me, and was asked to pick three, three of the films to show. Well, me, I dismiss one and two. One, because there's no Jason. Two, because he doesn't have the hockey mask. Now we are in what everyone thinks of Jason. He has the hockey mask. There's the guy with score to settle. We are introduced to uh, Tommy. Tommy becomes a reoccurring nemesis, which is interesting, considering he's like an eight-year-old kid in this one. And everybody that I knew that grew up on these films, really, we all got Tommy immediately. You know, he was us. He was, the, he was our avatar. And I think it starts showing certain things about the films and, and laying the groundwork about Jason. And, you know, the, this this was it. This is, quote, the final chapter. Tom Savini returned. Uh, okay, we're going to kill him off. Uh, it's it's a very good film. It has special, good special effects. Uh, I mean, okay, it's a very good Friday the 13th film. Let me clarify that just a smidgen. It is one of my favorites, and it really starts laying more more pathos, I guess. You know, Jason is pretty much always until 11, Freddy vs. Jason, kind of a one-note character. But the other characters are not one-note. We start to understand a little bit more, and we get in, you know, it gets into territory that I really appreciate and I really enjoy, and... It's just a fun watch. For me, it is top tier. It's it's one of the top, and it's one of my favorites. Friday the 13th, four. You know the one I'm talking about. One when Jimbo does that really cool dance. Yeah, yeah, that dance. I love that dance. So I'm going to be watching the Scream Factory uh, Blu-ray that came in the box set. Do you remember when I got that Scream Factory Blu-ray? Yeah. I think I may have done a dance then too, didn't I? So this one was uh, directed by Joseph Zito. Uh, Joseph also did this slasher called The Prowler. I know um, Trent and I were looking forward to watching this one together on a Horror Buddies episode. Just because we both had a lot of love for this one. The beginning of the Tommy Jarvis 
era, which would continue in five with what at the time was going to be like a uh, trilogy uh, of Tommy Jarvis movies. It still is one because, you know, you have Final Chapter, you have them in um, A New Beginning and Jason Lives. But originally, I, I believe they were wanting to do something different with this character. If that Crystal Lake show ever comes out, I, I do hope they have like origin stories of these other characters to like Tommy Jarvis which technically this is his origin story I guess so eh. okay so we are getting the flashback you know me and if you watch any of my Friday the 13th videos you know I love the flashbacks it's amazing how you can watch a movie so many times and you know you still find stuff that you never noticed before I'm sitting there watching the movie and whenever they're leaving Cam Crystal Lake they just put uh, Jason in the uh, the ambulance and they're 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 getting out of there that police car just start spinning out and going like sideways like he's losing control of the car it's like i've never noticed that before that's funny how did i never notice that holy jesus jumping christmas shit no if trent was beside me he would be repeating that all night he loves shit like that i like how the dude was the one that took his clothes off first now granted they didn't show anything but He's the one that took off his uh, Daisy Dukes and threw them. He was the first one. It's a known horror fact that this dance was originally to ACDC's Back in Black. But can we just give some love to uh, Lion? I mean, this song, it rocks. Love is a lie, and that's fucking true. His dance, though. He, he's, he's good. Right when he's about to kick in. Love is a lie. They cut it. Put on some of that damn romantic music. No thank you. Got those 501 button plies on. An amazing shot so they had like the porno thing going on and the girl went help and right then body with a fucking spear that rocked these days if Jason were to throw someone onto a car and it explodes everything as insane said that would be backed up with a car alarm Back in 84, we didn't have that to worry about. Jason does what Jason does. So final chapter giving us more role reversals. Usually you got the female in the shower. This one has the male in the shower. Love it. Oh God. I wish it would have went a little farther. I mean, I like the, the, the face smush. But, you know, give us a little bit more fucking... I like the crunch and you started singing the blood, but give it... Just take it a little farther. Damn it. Okay, so that was Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Next up is going to be um, A New Beginning. Uh, that was the last Horror Buddies episode that we did for the Friday the 13th series. If you would, go check that out. And when you come back, you'll get me again watching it again because you know might as well watch it every year it's okay roy will be fine you know what time it is it's time for some damn enchiladas can i get the white enchiladas So I'm full of chicken enchiladas and I'm ready to go with a new beginning. God, I love this movie. It's okay if you don't love it. You're wrong. <laughs> yeah, just fucking around. Part five. Or as I like to call it, the Halloween three of Friday the 13th. Getting into some spoiler. I guess I've already spoiled on several things. That, presuming you've already watched these if you're watching this video. This isn't Jason. And there are subtle clues to it. You don't hear quite as much kill, 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 mom. 
we, we've got into where that's how they'll, they'll do a lot of the POV point of view shots where you, you're they're trying to fake you out, make you think it's Jason. You can always tell if it's Jason if he's doing kill, 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 ma, ma, ma. And, and that is what he says. Sorry, no arguments. It's actually in the book. This book right here. Crystal Lake Memories, if you didn't see it. Um, he's imitating his mother from the first film. Kill her, mommy. Kill her. Kill her, mommy. I really enjoy the heck out of this little reckless Reggie. There's some silliness. There's, there's one scene where he's chasing this chick. Uh, she's wearing a white shirt and has a pink sweater tied around her neck. And she runs into a forest. As she runs into the forest, she has the sweater. As she's running through the forest, she loses the sweater. Okay, you got caught on a branch. I mean, you see her getting, you know, pulled and caught. Well, then when she exits the forest, the pink sweater is gone. <laughs> Poor Pam. Apparently, she I guess she went back to get the sweater. It meant a lot to her. Even though this is, quote, not Jason, I enjoy the heck out of this. For me, I, I, some may argue for me, this is top tier. The uh, three that I picked for the horror group was... Uh, four, five, and six, and because this is this is what people think of when they think of Jason, even if this quote isn't Jason. End quote. So, um, yeah, I love this. It's not my favorite, but it could be coming up. One thing I'll mention after you know, film two had a recap, film three had a recap, and film four had a recap. A new beginning doesn't give us a recap, probably because they're going for something new here, right? Hence the new beginning. So we didn't get a recap, but we did get a very nice Tommy dream sequence of Tommy when he was a kid at the grave of Jason Voorhees. Was it was a really cool shot whenever you know you had the uh, the rain slicked Tommy standing by the the Jason Voorhees grave. Thought that was a really cool shot. Really love that. Funny story about part five, which was almost the first. Friday the 13th that I ever saw. Family had moved into a new house and for the first time we had cable. This was circa 84, 85, somewhere in that area. And uh, I used to wake up in the middle of the night because you could watch the cool stuff and mom and dad weren't, weren't around to take you not to watch it. And Friday 13th part five came on at like uh, 2.30, 3.30 in the morning. And I woke up just in time to catch it. And I remember went in there, previous movie was going off, credits was running. And I got all the way to around the point where um, Jason at the very beginning of part five so i'm not spoiling thing jason gets up and kills the two guys that were trying to rob his grave and you see little uh cory feldman there in the rain and got his glasses on reprising his role from part four and you know jason's walking toward him well i fell asleep and i woke up while the credits are rolling crap by the end i was reading fangoria you know stuff like that so i i knew roughly what was going on i just really wanted to see this i i'm so excited well like a few days weeks later same thing happened you know, it was gonna be late you know 2 30 in the morning woke up the movie had already started and i fell asleep at roughly the same spot and woke up again while the credits was rolling <laughs> i think that's why when uh a couple years later when uh part six came out i was there opening night in the theater <laughs> I had missed my chance back then. So back then, we, we would go rent a VCR, and I think it was like a VCR and three videotapes for like $10 for the weekend. And it was always a hard choice, you know, even when I got older, and it was, you know, I was spending the money, and, and okay, do I get uh, They Live, or do I get Friday 13 Part 4, or, or do I get Night of the Living Dead, or Texas Chainsaw Mask, you know, those kind of things, which is probably why I have the ridiculous movie collection I do now. Are you Anthrax fans? Uh, go to 10 minutes and 3 seconds. Look there on the shelf and you'll see the Knot Man. The Knot, Knot, Knot. And then also, if you look to hmm, 12 o'clock from, I believe you get a little bit of Godzilla action too, which is the second Godzilla uh, thing that we see in the franchise because wasn't it 4 we saw the magazine opened to some Godzilla, and I see John Lennon as well. So, that is really cool. You know, after seeing the way Tommy just kicked Junior's ass, that makes me think, I would love to see Tommy Jarvis versus Freddie Harris. That would be epic. <laughs> Happy fucking Halloween. I can't remember if it 
was as a kid or as I've grown older, but I the blonde gal that's in the film I feel like is pretty hot, but like they tend to have a lot of like good looking actresses and actors in those films. So I might be way out of line, but I feel like she was, or maybe it was one time I was watching it and I was like, man, I can't remember if I thought she was a babe or was thinking she was a babe or now I think she is and who knows what I'm actually getting at. But even if anything else, the Friday movies are usually good for some babes. So that's always a plus. So it takes an hour and 10 minutes to actually see Roy in the mask. All the other times we see Roy, we're just seeing his weapons, his arms, things like that. It's just at the hour and 10 minute mark do we see Roy stand there when he busts through right hmm i don't know the fifth film which i would normally not like when they do the whole like Haha, it's not really jason it's a disgruntled paramedic but friday five is so absolutely batshit insane and every character is just totally off the rails and every insane choice they could have made it feels like they did you got the the chocolate bar kill you've got i think a kill with a, a, a road flare a demon just everything about demon is fantastic like everything that guy says and does is get up the enchiladas the implied diarrhea in the trailer park shit house the ooh baby hey baby sequence I, I think all of my friends will we will break into that to each other and it's a, it's a beautiful call and response between everybody is the the hey baby ooh baby it's also good and then you've got like the freaked out tommy jarvis that you know is like uh, was he he's like kind of i guess he's kind of mute throughout the film so that 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 film just being so like insane the reveal at the end that of course it's not jason Voorhees is it, it actually doesn't bother me like it would bother me for anything else because they went so nuts with everything surrounding that what does bother me is the way that film ends is it makes it look like tommy jarvis is then going to be the psycho in the next film i absolutely love this movie i do wish the kills were more bloody or they showed the kills more because it's like i don't know if they just didn't have the budget but you see a lot of after kill and you see a lot of unique kills that they were doing but you honestly you don't see any of them happen really you had the the cropsy kill roy has the hedge clip and you see it go down and then you see the aftermath so you know cool we saw the aftermath but you know we don't really see a lot of the actual kills go on that's uh, you know kind of a negative thing but you know it's just it, it, it and then it doesn't even matter because i love this movie i love the hangout I love the sleaziness uh love the story love the characters uh the unique kills are cool i just wish i could see them actually happen what do you think let me know down in the comments oh you know what's next jason lives friday six tommy jarvis is fine and we'll just drop that thread i guess all together okay once again the continuity you know it's, it's like what halloween 4 does at the end of halloween 4 you know it looks like little jamie you know she is in the clown costume just like michael with the knife she's attacked her mother and then in the next film we'll just whisk her away and she'll be mute and psychic with michael throughout the film You're like what the fuck who came up with this why would you do that so like yeah we go from a, a loony bin uh tommy jarvis to oh yeah tommy's fine he just wants to kill jason like, okay fine but again that movie's just so much fun and so it's so 80s that i that i love it another good looking blonde girl in that film the police officer's daughter that that tommy's with part six aka jason lives it's actually the first one i ever saw in the theater i think i was i guess i was 18 19 to kind of say this is a classic almost universal monsters film uh in the commentary the director i believe his name is tom mclaughlin mclaughlin and i'm probably not saying that right he said he was trying to make you know a monster film and if you put the film in and you take all the color out and watch it in black and white man it's a universal film i did that once and it was just amazing i enjoyed it of course universal films didn't have the special effects that these do or the kills by now the mpaa had really started cracking down on Friday the 13th, another film. You get a lot of implied, so you kind of have to, you know, use your brain a little bit to go, okay. But there's just so much about this film. Jason comes back from the dead. This, this is the start of Zombie Jason. He's the ass kicker. We're all dead. The only thing you can hope to do is outrun him and that he finds somebody else to kill and you get in the car and get far, far away. As far as I'm concerned, truly, this the video game Friday the 13th is based on this film. It's I just love it. This is my favorite. This is top tier, of course. I'm going to start the morning off right. I got my uh, Taco Bell burrito. Yummy, yummy, yummy. And um, you guys know me. 
you know I have to have my sauce too so sauce going here Friday the 13th Jason lives actually we we did a live stream fan commentary for this one that you can check out it uh, was with me Trent and Joey um, of course you guys know gotta have my Baja blast for this all right let's watch so in the truck ride we see that uh, Tommy has the Jason mask so we, we they're going hard on this mask thing for him because you know he makes masks uh, we see that he has Roy's mask at the end of uh, part five and you know here we're seeing that yeah he must have you know, after knocking Jason's mask off at the, the house, the cabin or whatever, in a final chapter, yeah, he made sure to add that mask to his collection. <laughs> that James Bond intro where it zooms into the eyes, he throws the uh, machete. Ah, perfect. Back then they were breaking the fourth wall long before Deadpool was. Some folks have a strange idea for entertainment. <laughs> I love it. And this is the only Friday the 13th that goes with that over-the-top, like, Evil Dead 2 sense of humor. And, and sometimes, depending on your mood, it either really works or it's more of an annoying thing. I mean, you can watch this movie, you know, in that state of mind and you just hate it. Or you can watch in the state of mind and just want to have fun with your horror. And then you, you love it. So, you know, if at first you watch it and hate it because of that, maybe just not in the right mood to watch it. Maybe try again. I absolutely love it. But I have watched it where it annoyed me. Seeing Jason with the utility belt is like, oh, I'm just not in the mood for utility belts. You know, sometimes I see it and I'm like, <laughs> he's wearing a utility belt. And the hits keep on coming. So in the scene where Cord is uh, banging in the RV, instead of showing the uh, breast shot from the female actress, we get his breast shot. <laughs> Such an amazing shot of Jason standing on the RV. Just uh, kind of like, the hunter with his trophy. I just love it. Alice Cooper has so many tracks on Jason Lives. It makes me think, what is my favorite Friday the 13th slash Jason song? Mine would be Wednesday 13, Death to His Party, I believe. What would be yours? Let me know down in the comments. And to give you guys some inspiration, I'll link my Friday the 13th Spotify playlist in the description. Now, just a little warning. I have other things on that playlist that are like 13 or Friday related. So, you know, you may come upon like Anthrax 13, which has nothing to do with Friday the 13th or Jason Voorhees. But it's just a playlist that I have for Friday the 13th. This is just in. I made this same plea on uh, on Facebook to give me your uh, your favorite song based on Jason Voorhees or Friday the 13th. Jonathan Butcher chimed in with Wolfie's Just Fine, A New Beginning. First time I ever seen this video or heard this song. It is fucking epic, guys. It is fucking epic. It was an auto-include to my playlist, so it would be on the playlist. Now, as a matter of fact, I'm going to link the video in the description as well, because the video is a is must-see as well. And while you're, you know, while I've got you paying attention, actually go ahead and grab yourself some Jonathan Butcher books, because this is, this is some extreme shit, you know. You need, to, you need to check them out. And this is what they say. Their favorite songs are. Thank God It's Friday by Ice Nine Kills. It's got my favorite Alice Cooper song in it. It's got, you know, he's back, the, the man behind the mask, which I love. And I, I've seen Alice, I think, 12 times. And I've seen him play that song twice. And I think it was in 21 and in 22, I saw him play it. And he has he has the character come out with the mask on and they, they do a throat slit to one of the actresses on the stage. And actually, the second time that I saw that, the 22 concert in Chattanooga, was... 
the one tour where Kane Roberts came back and played with him. So it was awesome to see Kane, you know, one to see Kane Roberts play with Alice Cooper and then to see them do my favorite Alice Cooper song, He's Back. And they also did Freedom from the Raise Your Fist and Yell, which is so fantastic. And speaking of Alice in Friday 6, one of my few cool pieces of memorabilia is my autographed Gosh, I'm sorry about that glare. My autographed uh, poster here, or picture that C.J. Graham autographed at uh, one of the Franken-Cons. And uh, that was, obviously that was really cool, really intimidating. C.J. was still in really good shape. My goal now someday is to see Alice a 13th time and maybe spring for VIP meet and greet signature stuff and see if I can get Alice to sign his part of that picture and to coincide with CJ and a grown ass man like me should not really want to do something like that. But that would be, it would be very satisfying. I would really much like to do that. That's a, that is a goal I have one day. I'm going to get it done. Thank God it's Friday, but I snark kills. Wednesday 13th till death do us party. I see a Mickey Mouse shirt has made it back into a Friday the 13th movie. This one wore by a kid. And also want to note that masters of the universe pajama set that kid was wearing. That was awesome. Tommy has sunken that maggot-faced Jason into the bottom of the lake. He was wearing his utility belt. I wonder if he will still be wearing his utility belt in the next movie. Let's find out. Alright, so I was bad at breakfast with a Taco Bell burrito, so I figured I'll do better for, for lunch and go with a salad. That's better, right? So now watching part seven, and they bring back the recap. Yes, bringing back the recap finally. And um, part seven, the new blood could have been called Jason versus Carrie. Just saying. Everybody knows this. I wish they would have done something like that. That would have been awesome. Part seven, the new blood, AKA the original time they tried to do Freddy versus Jason. Couldn't be worked out. The Jason versus Carrie was thrown about, and basically that's what this is. I believe the actress's name is Laura Park Lincoln, who plays, uh, her name's Tina, who has psychic powers. It's kind of pedestrian. The formula had been established and, and was well laid. The interesting thing is Jason finally has a, quote, victim, end quote, that can actually stand up to him and do some damage to him. Uh, apparently this was a... a troubled production or at least getting it to production which apparently i think every friday the 13th film is it's not bad and most importantly it brings the great and wonderful kane hodder into the family and kane is jason nothing against cj graham who, who was jason in my favorite film but kane hodder is jason of course those guys were too obviously for their films but Kane brought a lot to the character, and for, I don't know, I can't say a lot. For a lot of fans that I know, yeah, Kane is Jason. So this is the beginning, but this is also, in my opinion, the beginning of the end, where they start going, okay, we can't just do a Friday the 13th film. We need to do a Friday the 13th film, blah, you know. As it, you know okay, well, let's, let's take him here, or let's take him there, or he's fighting this person, or he's that, this or that. They were still making money, not as much money as they had made, but apparently they felt the need to reinvigorate the franchise. Or, or bring in some new blood, pun intended, which is probably, I believe, where the uh, subtitle come from. But um, it's not bad. It's in the middle for me. And uh, I, I watch it sometimes, but nowhere near as much as my favorites. Imagine my disappointment and my non surpriseness whenever they pan down and he does not have his utility belt. Now we're introduced to um, the Carrie character. She's like Carrie, you know, with her, her supernatural abilities. But then she kind of looks like uh, Carol Ann from uh, Poltergeist. And one more thing about young Tina. She is in uh, Leatherface as that creepy girl in Leatherface. Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 3 Leatherface. I'm sure there's like 50 of them named Leatherface these days. I see some slice on the table. God, I loved some slice back in the day. Dude, I love orange drinks. Slice is kind of like Sunkiss, but I mean, it had, had, a, had a different taste to it. Some fried chicken on the table too. Like a K Kentucky Fried Chicken ripoff box. So the first one with Kane as Jason just his walk man his stalk everything is just beautiful about the way he uh, moves as Jason and when 12 year old Doug saw this sleeping bag kill he was like that is the best kill in any movie and that stuck with me for a while will it remain my favorite kill 
Hmm. I wonder. Something about part sevens, the woods seem a little weird. I don't know. Fake looking. I don't know about you guys, but whenever Jason was walking with her, like by the throat, all dramatic, like walking her to the window, throws her out the window, the dramatic fall, just to get that lame, lame hit to the ground. Ah, it was kind of a... Yeah... This one was filmed in my old stomping ground. Well, not technically my old stomping ground because uh, it was more Decatur, uh, Alabama, more northern Alabama. But this one was, was filmed in uh, uh, southern Alabama. Pretty cool. I did not know that. The forest still look fake, though. What if they really did call it Friday the 13th Birthday Bash? That would have been pretty cool. So we wait the hour and 10 minutes. We finally get Carrie versus Jason. And this is, this is where it's at, guys. This is where it is. I'm a little bummed that we didn't get the utility belt on him. Not because I just absolutely love the utility belt, but for continuity reasons. He should have still had the utility belt, right? Why didn't you give me the utility belt? Even if he would have made a statement of taking that motherfucker off and throwing it over his fucking shoulder, at least we would have got that continuity. <laughs> the gasoline can shit fucking kills me. Tina just brings it up and it fucking... That's fucking great. And just when you thought it couldn't get weirder, Apparently, Tina has some sort of temporary resurrection spell when she rose her father from the ground just to take Jason down. Okay, so all these years later, yeah, I think my favorite kill in this movie is still the sleeping bag. Not that it was like u uberly gruesome because obviously it wasn't. I mean, you see, uh, you know, the sleeping bag with a body in it and then, you know, whenever he flops it down, she uh, pops out of it, right? It's still the sound, there's just everything, the, the excitement of that. I, I, th I still think that is my favorite uh, kill in this movie. Overall, I don't believe that is my favorite Friday the 13th kill anymore. We'll hear about that whenever I do my tier ranking. The movie, yet again, suffers from just not enough gore. I know, come on, give us a little bit more gore. Damn, that that's disappointing. I feel like I, I, I have that same complaint about a lot of these. Here's the thing, in my mind, it was a lot gorier when I watched it when I was younger. Yeah, I've watched it a lot of times since I was a young Doug, 12 years old, watching all these movies. But the first time you see it is kind of where kind of sticks in the back of your brain, you know? And even though I have seen it many more times, that first impression just has influenced my thoughts on the movie. I don't know. It's weird, you know? I'm probably talking bullshit, but you know. That, that's 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 gotta be it because in my mind it was like it was a lot more gruesome than it really was you know Friday 7 is the first one that I remember watching and I don't know if it just stood out because of the psychic thing or because I was so enthralled with the way that Jason looked when he comes up out of the water and you can see the bones and just how like awful and, and mutated and slimy he looks not knowing who Kane Hodder was but now come you know going back and you watch it and you might be like man what a batshit crazy idea we're gonna do a psychic carry versus Jason Voorhees because we have nothing else to do oh and we're gonna have dead psychic dad and the river comes back to save the day at the end of the movie what the hell? It's so stupid. But the Kane Hodder Jason is so awesome. He, when they when they pull the mask off of him at the end, and you see that mutilated face, it looks fantastic. The burn is insane. There's some really cool. You know, Jason gets his ass kicked in that movie. That actually, I think, almost makes up for the fact that a lot of the kills are real quick and got. I think cut i feel like i've heard or read somewhere that that film was one of the most of the censored and cleaned up films which is a bummer because I, I do have a soft spot for that one i like that one another pretty lady i believe like the actress that played uh i think her name was tina i feel like she, she was cute in the movie but then i feel like in the uh, documentary it was it called crystal lake memories or something crystal lake forever i feel like she was prettier in that and she's like 20 years older i don't know how i i do not look better than i did 20 years ago and i sure as hell i'm not going to look better in 20 years than i do now so I'm not sure how some of these people pull this off. It's like Tony Iommi. Tony Iommi's been... Tony Iommi's looked like he's 40 for like 30 years. And the guy's had cancer. I don't know how he's... Anyway, maybe he did sell his soul for rock and roll. So next I have Friday the 13th. Jason Takes Manhattan. Jason Takes a Boat Ride is not my favorite. I don't think it's anybody's favorite. 
It's got some good kills. The guitar kill is cool. I wish it wasn't cut away as fast. Of course, the boxer kill. Everybody loves the boxing kill. That one's great. I also like the drowning in the barrel of rat piss or whatever the hell that's supposed to be in the alley. That one's pretty sick. The ending is so dumb. We're like, oh yeah, we flush the sewers with toxic waste at the end of the night. I don't know. I do believe that New York's probably uh, parts of it are a shithole, but I don't think they flood the sewer with toxic waste. And why would it make Jason turn into a, a naked child who's like shivering from the cold? Like, man, there's just a lot going on in the movie that doesn't make any damn sense. And I will also say, though, another good thing about that film is that opening song, The Dark Side of the Night, absolute 80s banger. That's up there with like that Fight to Survive song from Bloodsport. And if you don't remember that, you need to go and check that one out. That song, the freaking Kumite song. Holy shit, it is awesome. The pure 80s at its finest. Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. This is Jason in New York. It's honestly a great idea. The problem is it takes him three quarters of the film to get there. And he actually goes to Canada, I believe, uh, Vancouver or uh, in British Columbia. This has two of my friend Paul Carson's favorite scenes in the whole Friday the 13th filmography. Where there's a, uh, one of the victims is a boxing champion. And, and not champion in the world, but like college or high school or something. And, you know, he chases him and he's trying to box him. He's, you know, he... he Gives Jason a few good punches, and then Jason literally punches his head off, and it rolls down and lands in the trash. It cracks me up even thinking about it. There's also a scene where Jason is walking through Manhattan. Actually, that might have been actually... They did film a few scenes in Manhattan, so that may have actually been one. Uh, there's a gang sitting there with a big boombox. Jason walks by, uh, and I, I, I don't remember what's playing, but it's really loud. Case Jason just kicks it, and here jumps up like, you know, eight, ten guys, and like, Hey, man, what are you doing? He turns around, and he just lifts up his hockey mask, and... It's good, man. It's good. And they're all just backing up. That That's also one of my favorite scenes. It's not bad. I, I, I still feel like they should have got him to New York sooner. But truthfully, they, they didn't have the budget. So a lot of this is a uh, set on the the boat there's a boat i think it's a high school graduation and they're going to new york and they're on taking a boat where you where you're going from new jersey to new york on a lake i'm not sure but anyway jason does go to manhattan for a little while and then ends with one of the weirdest endings where apparently in this universe they flush toxic waste through the new york sewers at night jason is chasing the last couple of victims and they're able to get out and toxic waste hits him and it turns him into a little boy and you're like what yeah, most of us are, so it was promptly um, ignored, and, well, it should be. About to watch, um, part eight, Jason Takes Manhattan. I've actually been dreading doing this one. This is the one that Trent and I had scheduled to do a live stream of three days before the live stream he passed, so, yeah, I've been kind of, kind of dreading doing this one, but, uh, let's go. So we've got um, the Paramount Picture Presents logo coming up and uh, framed out by the World Trade Center. Damn. You got this amazing soft rock song going. You're setting the stage of New York. Just can't wait to see Jason in Manhattan. Little do we know at this point that it's more like Jason takes a boat to New York. <laughs> Because, well, it's not a lot of uh, Manhattan here. <laughs> it's more of a, a boat ride. By the way, we're back to no recap if you're taking notes. So Jason's mask is like piss yellow. I mean, just so yellow. <laughs> is this due to being submerged in the water? Is that what, is what we're calling this? We're not getting the continuity with the mask here. You do have the um, the machete mark on the top, but the grinding from the the propellers there at the uh, the chin part, it, there's no sign of that ever happening on this mask. Safan so Henderson, uh, the girl with the uh, V-shaped guitar, she actually voiced Goku in the Dragon Ball, so pretty much Kid Goku from the BLT production uh, dubbing, and she did Gohan in Dragon Ball Z, so that is really cool. DBZ fans represent, it's almost like they're running out of ideas. Well. They're not running out of ideas. They're trying too hard to find interesting ways to kill people in these movies at this point. Like, when he's in the sauna and they grab the, like, you know, that, the, the heater, heat rock, whatever you call those things, 
and he shoves that. And he just like, ooh, so guys, let's let's think outside the box. What can we kill someone with that has never been done before? You know. Would you like to have been in that rotter's room if that was a rotter's room? Hell, my been Rob sitting there toking up or something, rotting it out in his, you know, his 80s, so word processor probably. I mean, I, I guess he could have had like a Tandy 2000 or something he was rotting it up on, but one kill I'm not going to complain about, though, is my favorite kill of the movie. And that's that rod hook that Jason has whenever he fuck knocks Julius's head straight off his fucking neck. That's how it's done. In the Toxic Avenger Jason kid, it was an interesting choice. Yeah. The picture quality looks outstanding on this release. Which makes this sewer scene all the more sad because what the fuck were they thinking whenever they were doing this? I mean, I don't know. Overall, I enjoy this movie. I really do. But it's like, I don't know. It's like a lot of the kills were the cutaway kills or, you know, ooh, we're going to reinvent the kill. I have already stated earlier. And his stalking is not like stalking like, you know, you get in most Friday the 13th. It's more of a, I don't know, it's a weird, creepy, like, like he, he's the kind of guy, like, you know, he would poke his head into shit. Jason is not the kind of dude that's going to poke his head into shit. And this is Kane doing this. I don't know. That was there were some weird choices in this movie, but like I said, I do enjoy it. Is it my top tier? Probably not. But you'll find out in December. What do you guys think? Do you guys is this like a go-to for you? This is the the last Friday the Thirteenth for the eighties. You know, nineteen eighty nine boys, and it's done. Next Friday the Thirteenth we got was not until uh, two thousand nine because the next movie was Jason Goes to Hell. No Friday the 13th there. Thanks, Victor Miller. And then, of course, you know, you got Jason X. No Friday the 13th there. And, um, Freddy vs. Jason. That soft rock kicking back in just really get you on the dance. I want to dance! Sunday morning, I'm about to watch Jason Goes to Hell. Let's make a little bit of breakfast. Yeah... It's that time of year, guys. You can go to the grocery store. You can find the monster cereal. Um, you can stock up on booberry. And, you know, go ahead and grab you a couple Frankenberries, too. Because I do enjoy the Frankenberry. And um, let's, uh, let's watch some horror. I got my cereal. And I'm ready to watch. Friday the 13th, part 9, Jason Goes to Hell. I actually had to break out my um, shout box disc set, which um, if you are in a mind to get Friday the 13th films, you should have this box set. Just so you know, it looks like this. It's on sale from time to time. Uh, it's amazing. It's got all of them, including the one that I act like doesn't exist. Uh, anyway, getting back to to uh, Jason 9, Jason Goes to Hell. I believe this is the first one where New Line had taken over, had bought the Friday the 13th franchise from Paramount, and I don't know what the heck they were doing. They kill Jason, the FBI finally goes to Camp Crystal Lake, kills Jason, takes his body in, and for some strange reason, the attendant uh, in the morgue doing the autopsy takes Jason's heart and eats it. According to... Uh, I don't know if there was a novel or what. Somehow Jason influences him. And Jason's body hopping, which makes no sense. It does have, interestingly enough, there was a TV series called Friday the 13th. The series, which didn't have anything to do with Jason. But one of the lead actors in the first two seasons of that is in this film. His name is John D. LeMay. I'm not going to lie, this is bottom tier for me. The only reason I even had this film for a long time was the last scene where they drag Jason to hell after using the Necronomicon and a few other regular tropes. Jason's dragged to hell by demons and his hockey mask is left laying there. Movie ends, we, we come back, we see the hockey mask there and then we see this hole open up and out comes Freddy Krueger's arm with the glove and starts laughing and he grabs the mask and pulls it in. That was the best thing about the whole film. Honestly, the rest of this 
film. I, I really don't even remember. Saw it in the theater. I think I've watched it a couple times on cable TV. I actually had the original DVD of it and gave it to a friend because, like I told him, it was st- I'd had it for close to ten years and it was still in shrink wrap. Because you know, YouTube, you can pull it up, pull up the scene with Freddy, and boom, you're done. So, bottom tier for me, maybe the worst. Uh, Jason goes to hell. I remember last time I watched it, I hated it. I don't like again. Just give me the Jason stuff. Like I know they're trying to get they're trying to get more esoteric with it and, and trying to maybe work in some of you know like new lore and stuff. And I just think I don't know, nine films in. It's kinda late to try to do that, especially when I don't know, does anybody really want that? Just just give us Jason and give us the creative kills. Which the movie does have some good kills. Like the couple that are doing it in the tenth, and I feel like it's like a road sign and impales the gal with it and then like I feel like it rips up and something like that. And I feel like there's a pretty gory scene with like a shoulder separated. It looks like the T one thousand and, and Terminator two. That one's pretty sick. And and then from what I remember, there's like a body melt in the Voorhees house or or whatever the hell that place is at the end. And it seems like something more like out of the fly than it seems like a Friday film. But it looks amazing. It's, it's really cool. I really like that. But outside of those two things, I don't remember a lot that I really liked about that film. And it's not one that I really want to revisit much because I always feel like I come away being like, okay, those two scenes are cool. But I don't know. And maybe I'm wrong. I can't remember. So obviously we're going to have to go with the uncut version of this one i am glad that scream put the uncut in the set because i know the the 10 did not have the uncut and i had to actually keep the uh, dvd around so this first part we're gonna see the um the jason setup where they're set jason up how far did they go on this i mean did they mean for the light bulb to to blow out like that was that a setup as well i don't know when you want to get that milk and you don't want to go spoon a spoon for it. You just drink that shit. So Michael Felcher and Adam Marcus have been working on a documentary called The Hearts of Darkness, The Making of the Final Friday. Uh, but it's like, it seems like this thing has been like ongoing. It's like, is it ever going to come out? I don't know. It may or may not. One weird thing about that is why name it the Heart of Darkness? Because, you know, there was a a very famous documentary made about a movie called Apocalypse Now. Is that why they called it uh, the Heart of Darkness? Probably, I would would imagine. And why the hell is it taking so long to come out? Because I would really be interested in seeing that. I know Adam has gone on record saying that this is uh, a Deadite version of uh, Jason, which is... That's kind of cool. Always wondered, why did she fix her panties right before she peed? Isn't that kind of a waste of time? You know, like, like, let me unstick the wedgie, and then all of a sudden, she's pulling them down the pee. Oh, that's just silly. You know, I come on these videos a lot, and I complain how the fans were like, oh no, we can't have that, and that's why, like in, uh... Halloween 4, we think we're going to get Jamie as the new shape. And by 5, we we get Michael again. Or how, you know, oh, fans complained about Roy being Jason. We can't have Tommy as the Voorhees-style slasher. Well, when this film came out, I guess I was kind of that fan because I was that fan that, oh, I wanted Jason. I wanted Jason throughout the whole movie and I barely got Jason. When honestly, you've got a pretty unique story in this movie. It's actually pretty good. And then when you see the Necronomicon in the movie, you're going, you're that fucking meme. You know the meme I'm talking about. And the kills in this movie are pretty damn good too. Or at least in the uncut version. I do love all the like subtle hidden things in the movie. It is is really cool. I mean like everything from even little things like names and like the Necronomicon and you know the other things that are subtly in the movie. One thing that I read is this is not the last time you see that Jason heart being used. You also see that heart in From Dust Till Dawn. I'm sure they didn't use it as a subtle nod to the Friday the 13th series, unfortunately. But it's still cool. The name of the movie, Jason Goes to Hell, is kind of stupid, though. I wish they would have went with the original name, which was uh, The Dark Heart of Jason Voorhees. That one, that's actually a pretty pretty decent name for, for what this movie is. After nine movies, they finally get to walk off into the sunset for a happy ending. Or is it? Hmm. A lot of things I've learned and my tastes have changed since 
93. Actually, I mean, my taste has changed since 2005, you know. Taste change. If I was to experience this movie for the first time now, I may have not hated it like I did back in 93 when I was seeing it in the theaters. Just like when I watched Halloween Ends, I didn't hate it like a lot of people did. So I'm not going to, you know, disregard the people that, you know, hated Halloween Ends because, you know, Doug of 93 probably would have hated Halloween Ends as well. Why do things always go back to Halloween ends? I enjoyed this movie. Is it going to be on my uh, top five? Is it going to be my top movie? Well, you'll have to find that out in December. I think I think I need to go to space. Mom, do you want to watch a Friday the 13th movie with me? Like the one that goes to space? I don't watch them things. They're stupid. I just don't like them. However... Jason X, a.k.a. Jason 10. I love the heck out of this silly film. It, it, it really is top tier. It's so silly. But honestly, the whole franchise is a little silly, you know. So just sit back, have fun. Jason in space, to continue the themes from earlier. And Jason goes around killing, I believe they're college students on some spacecraft. Rather inventively with a few of them. The um, liquid nitrogen kill is, is pretty awesome. Also, since we're in the future, we have a robot and we have nanites. Well, Jason gets an upgrade, sometimes called Uber Jason. It's like a chrome mask. And if anything, he's even stronger and even more resistant to damage. I also really like the ending of this film. Uh, it's kind of funny. He, uh, he's blown out of the spacecraft and the security head aims him down towards a planet which miraculously seems to be Earth around 1980. And there's some people, make, I think they're making out at a, a campsite. And guess what? They see a falling star. So you know, basically it all starts over. Again, it's a little silly, but I enjoyed the heck out of it. I saw it in a the theater. I was the only one in the theater. It's kind of funny. And I was sitting there and I was just enjoying the heck out of it. And it was like five or ten minutes left. And the guy came in to clean. I was like, man, I'm the only one in here. You can go ahead and clean. He's like, no, I have to wait. So I waited for the film to end and left. Nothing like the being the only person in the theater to watch a whole film. So for me, top tier. I enjoy the heck out of it. Jason X is absolute trash, but highly recommended. It's super fun, super stupid. Has one of the best kills with the freeze-dried face smashed into the counter with icy blood slushy mush that comes out. That one's an absolute banger, top 10. And then I, I do like that stupid part where he's in the hologram and they make fun of the kill from Seven, that, that really good sleeping bag kill. And uh, you know he, he can't kill the girl. He keeps hitting her in the sleeping bag. It's so dumb, but I think it's it's funny and it, that movie's entertaining, if nothing else. Actually, that's the one, I, I think that might have been the only Friday film that I actually saw in the theater, or the first one. That's why I love when you get this close to fall, you get these nice little voodoo Mountain Dews 2024. I wonder what that one's going to taste like. Oh, man. That's good. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's really good. Back in 2002, Jason went to space. Everyone should go to space. Freddy? Freddy should go to space. Chucky? Chucky? Yo, you really need to go to space. You and Megan, you can have like, Megan versus Chucky in space. Now that. That would, that would sell. You guys call me up. I'll write that script for you. We have uh, Pinhead is in space. The Leprechaun's in space. Those movies rock. The space pizza, it rocks. Has David Cronenberg ever came into a movie and was a good guy? I'm pretty sure he's a good guy, like, in Star Trek. It's like, no movie is he ever a good guy. This movie falls into the category of people just need to get their head out of their own asses and then enjoy a movie. I mean, in today's times, people jump on Twitter, or X, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. They want to say how bad a movie is. Get over your fucking self. Just, just, just do it. Just have fun. Be entertained. All these guys walk in here with their little uniforms on and they, they all look like Star-Lord to me. Whoa, it is 2024. Who's going to outlaw hockey? Uh! There we have our little cameo from uh, Todd Farmer, the writer of Jason X. And there we got my favorite kill of the movie. I think I share this kill with a lot of people. Where he freezes the face and then slams it down. That kill was so cool.
Now it's really cool. I like how the mask is back on track with, you know, with the scarring. You have the the, the Friday the 13th uh, part 4 slash down the, the, the front. You also have where the scarring at the bottom, whenever the boat propeller was chopping it up. So that's really cool. But we won't get this mask for long. We're going to get the Uber Jason. Yes, yes, yes. They obviously went hardcore Star Trek aliens on this movie. I just wish their outfits were a little bit, little bit more hardcore Star Trek. Uh, because, you know, I think that would have done well. I mean, they almost get it on some of the people, you know. But then some of it's just like, I don't know. Like to do with the do-rag, I mean, come on, man. And the uh, anal beads he's wearing, I don't know, whatever the hell he's wearing. But, you know, I, w I wish they would have went on more hardcore on the, like, you know, their, their outfits. And since we're talking about attire, can we just talk about Jason's look? The old school Jason look. We're not, we're not talking about Uber Jason yet, because he's, he's not Uber Jason. <laughs> Good God, those special effects for the crashing ship. Oh, I mean, honestly, the hair looks god awful. Just the whole attire doesn't look good. Bring me Uber Jason. I mean, the mask looks good. The hair, horrible. Fuck, I'm out of here. The door he yanked open led to the closet, and he slammed it shut so hard it fell to the floor. Jason X. They 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 call him Jason X in here because I mean, you know, we're not gonna call him Uber Jason. We're gonna call him Jason X. Jason X took two steps into the force field, which crackled with life. Instantly, the field shocked him, thrusting him back a foot. He plowed into it again, getting shocked again. The metal he wore and the flesh of his body smoking at the intense and violent contact. This is, this is, this is what you get with these, uh, these books here. I should have did a vlog on reading this one. If you want a vlog of me reading this one, the tie-in novel to Jason X, let me know down in the comments. That is what you want. If you check out the playlist that this is in, you'll see that I have a, a reading vlog for Church of the Divine Psychopath. Check it out, too. Maybe if I get enough likes there and you guys chime into the comments, maybe I will do that one, too. Let me know what you think. Oh, you know what we get next? We get what was promised to us and Jason goes to hell. We get Freddy versus Jason. So, Creepy J, I got a question. Huh? Who would win between Jason Voorhees and Freddy Krueger? Jason. Really? Yeah, because he has a big machete and it can cut Freddy Krueger's freaking head off. I mean... You got a point. And he could chop his hands off whenever he can't get payback. Oh, now that. But but the thing is, is when Jason dreams, wouldn't, you know, Freddy grow his hand back? Hmm. Well, I really, really think Jason will win this because he has a big machete and he can step it through his heart. Oh, okay. I got, a, I got another question, Creepy J. Okay. So me and Uncle Trent, when we would watch these fine films like Freddy's vs. Jason, we would have like movie snacks. Hmm. You know, what is your like go-to movie snack? Well, I used to eat these back then and I would say Scooby Snacks. Okay, yeah, some Scooby some Wednesday Gushers. Gushers. Oh, see, I like stuff like the Gushers because you're sitting there and you got a little gummy or whatever. But when you get in the middle of it, it's like a blast of like fun juices. <laughs> yeah, pretty good choices, bud. You won't find this DVD cover because I made it. I call it Friday the 13th Part 11. Other people call it Freddy vs. Jason. I call it by the proper title of Jason vs. Freddy, Friday the 13th Part 11. Uh, just having a little fun there. Uh, that's a great film. I uh, I have a friend. I'm, I'm a big Jason fan, obviously. I have a friend who's a big Freddy Krueger fan. My friend Paul that I mentioned is a big Halloween fan. We all have some good-natured ribbing, you know. I've talked to my friend Mike, who's the big Freddy fan, and we both agree. I mean, they, they did both characters right. Character-wise, other than adding this weird Jason scared of water because he drowned as a kid thing. But anyway, this is a great film. I enjoy it. Top tier for me also. Really, the only complaint I have about about this film is the removal of Kane Hodder, who had been playing Jason since uh, 
Seven, The New Blood, uh, Ghost of Manhattan, Ghost to Hell, X. And apparently he was interviewed, but the director, Tony Yoon, wanted someone taller and more intimidating to contrast against Freddy Krueger being like, you know, Howard Tall, Robert Englund is somewhere around 5'7", five, 5'8", five, as far as I know. And he got a guy named Kurt Kersner, I believe is what his name was. He's like 6'5", or something. So yeah, you've got, you know, big change there. But really, when... You know, he gives a fine performance, so I, I'm not going to dog him too much. I just think it, the only complaint, like I said, I, I would like to have seen Kane play this one. But, you know, we still got a good film out of it, so I can't complain too much. Top tier for me. Freddy vs. Jason. There really needs to be more versus movies. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are plenty. I mean, we have Alien vs. Predator. We have Batman vs. Superman. We have Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. We have The People vs. Larry Flint. And pretty much ninjas and zombies vs. pretty much everybody. And, you know, then you got the sci-fi versus where they get their big creatures or their big sharks versus each other. We've got them, right? But there just needs to be more of these. And I know it's a rots issue. Uh, I'm not forgetting you King Kong versus Godzilla. I love you. Oh, we do have Godzilla versus King Kong too now. That just came out a few years ago. But I just wish, you know, I would like to have more. I want more. It's like there are so many opportunities out there, you know. Like like we have the comic book, uh, Jason versus Leatherface. Let's bring that to theaters. Back in 2003, we did get Jason versus Freddy. Which, from my understanding, was in developmental hell. Because A, Paramount owned Jason and New Line owned Freddy. Freddy. Freddy versus Jason versus Ash would have ruled, but they didn't go with that. But there is a comic book out there if you want to, you know, get that fix in. What is your favorite versus movie? Let me know down in the comments. And what would you love to see come out? Like, you know, Chucky versus Megan or Chucky versus Pennywise. While watching this fine film, I'm going to be drinking this, which is totally not me because I do not like Oreos, but I do like weird drinks, especially whenever they, you know, mix this with that. I, I, I like weird shit like that. So I will be drinking Oreo Coke Zero. Since chances are I'm not going to like that drink too much, I'm just going to uh, pour it in this glass. That way I can share it with people. See? I'm nice. Oh, I will get some Oreos I like, though. Ah, now for the test. It does have a hint of a smell of Oreo. Honestly, it honestly just tastes like a flat Coke Zero with maybe a hint of a Oreo cookie to it. Maybe, maybe that's a little hint that I'm just trying to grasp. Not as bad as it could have been, but it just, it just tastes flat, honestly. Now, these on the other hand, now these little babies, these are going to be good. You know, but now on this diet, damn, when the pumpkin spice stuff comes out, though, it's hard to stay on the diet. So I'm trying to be good, still, y'all. I am. But pumpkin spice is my vice, baby. Mmm. Mm-hmm. See, I gotta eat these before Creepy J gets her hands on them because she'll try to eat them all. Mm -hmm. She'll be so mad if she knew I was in here eating all these without her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. 
This one's directed by Ronnie Yu. He brought us Bride of Chucky, which had John Ritter in it. This one has John's son, Jason Ritter. That's really cool. Let's talk about that machete penetration. That was, uh, that was pretty, pretty extreme. Pretty, um, uh, pretty good job there, Jason. The colors have never looked this good in a Friday the 13th movie. Maybe in a Nightmare on Elm Street movie, but never in a Friday the 13th movie. Man, these colors just pop. This vlog has been an endurance challenge for me. I, uh, I'm hoping you guys made it this far. If you did make it this far, thank you for watching, man. I hope you guys subscribe. I hope you, uh, give me a thumbs up and, and leave some comments. Uh, tell your friends about this. This has been rough. There's a couple times I didn't think I was going to get through it. I had to change my plan a few times. The effort it takes just for like, you know, 30 views. But I love this series and I'm just, I wanted to do this. So, like I said, man, if, if, if you guys made it this far, thank you so much much there's somebody behind me isn't there where, where did you come from This cornfield rave here reminds me of Clown on the Cornfield. If you haven't read that, get on that. Read the books before the movie comes out. I usually don't drink soda, but for Oreos, I'm going to do it. Okay, let's see it. For me, it tastes like an Oreo. It does? Yeah. It tastes a little flat, though. Kind of like an Oreo. You like it then? You want the rest? <laughs> sure. Freddy vs. Jason. And that one has a good Jason kill. The the kill in the bedroom when the guy's laying on his on his uh, stomach and Jason comes in and machetes him and then folds the bed up and breaks the dude. That is a bitchin' kill. Absolutely fantastic. That movie's also, like, really dumb. And the lore, again, doesn't make any goddamn sense. Like, Freddy's afraid of fire. Like, okay, maybe. He never really seemed bothered by it like, before. And then, like, Jason's afraid of water, even though he lives on Crystal Lake. <laughs> okay. Sure, whatever. But like any excuse to just get them together and start killing. That's what that's what I want. And of course, the battle between he and Freddy is is freaking awesome. Absolutely killer, and definitely worth all the other stupid crap in that movie to get to it. So they still had their orderly's badge. Are you trying to tell me they didn't deactivate that badge whenever it went missing? Something tells me they would have deactivated that bitch. Ronnie Yu was the perfect guy to get to direct this. I mean, with his experience with like wire work and stuff, with making, uh, you know, uh, other movies, just awesome. And like I've already said, the color is just awesome. The blood spray is amazing. I know Insane has said that whenever she saw this in the theater back in 2002, this movie single handedly made her fall in love with like blood spray. I mean, and I can see that. This It's just, he lets it flow. <laughs> Okay, so for the main lines, you know, of all the scenes that sh ended up in, like, the editing room floor, why did that pinball scene not end up there? Because I just, I don't like that scene. It just, it's lame. All the other scenes between Freddy and Jason are really good, except for that. That is just like, it's, a, it's like an eyesore. What do you guys think? There is, that's pretty much it. Uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, that's the last one. And Friday the 13th, that's the last one. Now, they both get rebooted. Friday the 13th gets rebooted in 2009. And Nightmare on Elm Street gets rebooted in 2010. Th then after those reboots, that's it again. Next up, we do have the Friday the 13th remake. I'll be watching that one again. Uh, I just watched it uh, a couple months ago for Pillowcase of Doom, but I thought about, well, maybe I shouldn't watch it. I'll just, you know, talk about it a little bit more just to have it on this video. But then I was like, no, then that wouldn't be authentic just to watch vlog. So I'll be watching it.
And the Friday the 13th film that I don't recognize. <laughs> and I'm going to be nice and listen to my, my, my mother who's passed on who told me, you know, if you can't say anything, I still don't say anything. Uh, I will say that it did bring in Derek Mears into the family and he's more than welcome. So that's really all I have to say about this. The 2009 remake, uh, I have only seen once. I only saw it once in 2009, like maybe the weekend or so that it came out. And I remember thinking that the dialogue was really bad, even for a Friday film, because I feel like there was a line about someone's nipple placement on the on the knockers in like a sex scene. And I couldn't tell if they were being serious or if I was supposed to laugh. It's it's almost got like one of those uh, Italian horror movie things where they just say something deadpan. And I'm like, I have no idea how they want me to, to take this this compliment about this gal's uh, nipple placement. From what I recall, they were, you know, lovely breasts, and I'm sure they were fantastic nipples, but that's just something I never thought to remark upon was the nipple placement. And that's really what stands out to me the most about that one. Although I remember the beginning being pretty kick-ass uh, with the uh, guy, somebody's like on fire in a sleeping bag or something, and then he comes running in, and, and I think he machetes somebody. So that, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, but I need to revisit that. I haven't seen that. Uh, oh, my God. I haven't seen that, uh, I guess, in 15 years is, is when that movie came out if i'm doing my math correct yeah so i threw in the remake and i was like well since i literally just watched the remake a couple months ago why don't i watch it with commentary guess what you don't have commentary on this scream factory version even though technically the scream factory version is just a uh, the same fucking version that you got like the, the killer cut i guess is what they called it so that was very very disappointing but did look we are getting commentary track on that new disc that will be coming out in matter of days uh yeah i know you know those cold channels they already have it you know i won't get it until like amazon sends it to me in like next week <laughs> but you know i'm looking forward to it um i will be watching it uh december 13th uh, because i'm gonna watch it with commentary on uh, damn it this disc i may have mentioned this on uh the pillowcase of doom but this disc is just so frustrating to even get through it's like for one thing you put the the blu-ray in and it automatically starts trying to get to the fucking menu is a fucking pain in the ass the actual menu is a pain in the ass because it's like you know you can't fucking tell where you're at luckily it starts you on the unrated but if you do want to see the theatrical you can navigate to it but it's still a pain in the ass it's just like i don't know i did this this i can't wait to have that arrow version because this this version is full of piss and bullshit who do you guys think will put out the 4K for, like, the, the other ones? We already had the 4K for the first one. They announced the 4K for the second one. And then we'll get the 4K for this one. But, like, like that Freddy vs. Jason. I want that shit on 4K. Those colors are going to pop. That blood's going to pop. Mm. Sometimes, especially with uh, the Michael Bay films, the editing, the, the, the quick edits just kind of get annoying. Just how quickly it's editing it's like i want to i want to take in the look i want to see i want to see jason like how he's looking and like so we just got through with the uh the scene where jason's on the floor you know pulling dude in and shit and i just i like to i like to see jason i don't want to fucking quick fucking edits where it's like i don't see shit Sometimes you just gotta have that movie snack. We do have the pumpkin spots out there these days because it is getting close to fall. So let's, uh... oh yeah, baby. So what do you guys like to snack on? Do you like pumpkin spice? That's the first question. Do you? I absolutely love it. I do. I just love it. Next question. Do you like pineapple on your pizza? <laughs> yeah. Mmm. When I was a kid, I'd always fancy myself like crawling into crawl spaces and like hanging out down there and doing, you know, having my own space. You know, this was when I was a kid. I had my bedroom, but you know. That's kind of, you know, where, where, where this movie feels. It's Jason's always going underground and shit like that, you know. Young Doug would have dug that. 
the filmmakers do a really good job making you really hate Trent. The, the asshole cheating on his girlfriend. Kind of like Dave Grohl. Well, yeah, they they really do a good job at making you hate that dude because... Holy fuck, you just... You want him to fucking die. That's why they don't kill him right away, right? Because they want you to want him to die. I can't, I can't believe... I can't believe we're finally done. I have watched all 12 movies. I'm not doing any of the uh, the fan movies. Uh, maybe if you guys really like this and, you know, I'm, I'm blown away about how many, you know, views I got and how many likes there are. Maybe I'll think about doing something like that. But uh, for you few that has made it all the way to the end, thank you. Thank you for, for watching. There's going to be the Friday the 13th playlist. You're going to... With this in it, then plus a couple of the horror buddies, the pillowcase of doom. Uh, you're gonna have the um, the reading vlog. Uh, that's gonna be there. Uh, that's where I will put um, a little collection video that's not done yet. That will be done by next Friday the 13th, which is in December. And then you are also gonna be getting my ranking video. But guys, thank you for watching. And if Jason is stalking you from out there in Crystal Lake. Stay spooky. And stay out of those fucking canoes. Get off the fucking lake. What are you doing? Put that drug away. No premarital sex. Are you crazy?